Hello, Team Trinant. This is Thomas Cutler, the Senior Director of Product Development and the Head of the Scientific Advisory Board here at Trinant. I'm excited to talk to you today about uh, a fun new product that we just recently launched at our TLA event and uh, we're making it available soon to the rest of the world. Uh, the product is called Transform. And so for the next few minutes, um, I'm pleased to tell you a little bit about the product, uh, a little bit about what drives our our uh, interest in this product and, and some of the fun things that we've been seeing as well. So let's just get right into the nitty gritty. The product is called Transform. Um, it's next generation technology for blood sugar management is the tagline I've developed for this product. Um, clearly there's a need in today's day and age for um, improved glycemic control. And we are leveraging here at, uh, at Trinant um, our expertise and our partnerships um, in enzyme technology um, as a means for uh, helping you, uh, your loved ones, and anyone really who's, who may be struggling with um, glycemic control um, with this product. The product comes in capsules. There are 60 capsules uh, to the bottle. Uh, you'll see here, this is a, a, a the product shot, a hero shot of the product. And uh, we're, we're really excited about some of the fun things that we've been hearing um, from people who tried the product in a pilot group and also um, in some early adopters. So, like I said, let's just get right into it. There's a massive epidemic right now um, in North America dealing with uh, three non-contagious um, uh, chronic disease states or just uh, just health in general, whether it's cardiovascular disease, uh, poor glycemic control, obesity. All of these are, are driven... Um, uh, primarily by lifestyle decisions. There's some genetic modification, genetic co contributions, definitely, but these are primarily driven by decisions, decisions that we've made um, in how we choose to live our life. Now, Transform is a product that um, is the name of the product that we chose specifically because of what it does uh, in the body, and it really addresses the transformation and how we metabolize foods. And so we're going to talk a little bit about metabolism um, and how Transform addresses and improves our, our metabolism. So first, just a quick reminder and a refresher that metabolism is a word that encapsulated, encapsulates this process of changing uh, chemical energy or converting chemical energy, what we call food, um, into a useful form of energy in the body, ATP. Um, and there's a couple of steps in that process, uh, including mastication or chewing, uh, digestion in the in the stomach, and uh, the absorption in the intestinal tract, and further digestion, I guess, a little bit as well, fermentation um, in, the, in the intestinal tract, absorption, and then, of course, elimination. Things that can't be used uh, get eliminated. Um, metabolism is a uh, a way um, is is how we take take that food and use it um, and apply it and put it to use in the body. Um, and we can certainly prime and and improve our metabolism um, through a number of different factors. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. I really want to set the stage though with with a series of questions um, questions that, that are designed to promote and, and provoke thoughts. So think in your mind, have you ever felt like I've just got these insatiable cravings? Like I see uh, somebody brings in a donut to work or something and I just cannot resist it. Maybe you felt uh, your mind is just not clear. You you can't pay attention. You're struggling with, with uh, focusing and concentrating or, or your mind just feels like it's in a fog. Um, Perhaps you're just exhausted. You're tired. You're 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 burning the candle at both ends. You, you just there's nothing that you can do, and no amount of mojo or zest or or anything is going to lift you up and pick up pick up your uh, your energy levels and your mood. Um, maybe you're dealing with some skin blemishes, some breakouts. Like you're thinking, "Oh, I'm a, uh, I'm not a 15 year old teenager anymore. Why am I breaking out?" And and lastly, maybe my pants just aren't fitting that great. I, I could have sworn 
you know, a month ago, these were awesome. They, these felt so good and I looked so good. And now they're just a little tight or they're, they're struggled to get into. So if you've ever, if you've answered yes to any of these questions, or maybe you're answering yes to a lot of them, this is the talk of the time and the product for you. Okay. We're going to talk a little bit about um, why we're feeling that way. One is the, the standard American diet um, that we received from, um, from, uh, Various government officials are to to have this distribution of macronutrients, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins, and, and this is a problem in and of itself. But the reality is, is we eat a lot even worse than that. If we were really disciplined about that and eating clean, uh, lots of good healthy produce um, with good lean protein, we'd probably be okay. But in the situation, we're not. We we go to what's uh, quick, what's what's inexpensive, uh, what is energy dense. Um, lots of calories, lots of simple carbs, um, carbs mixed with fats. Um, and, and that's a, uh, it turns out this is really not a great um, combination to keep a, a healthy, uh, lean um, metabolism uh, functioning. And so um, to kind of exacerbate that, we, we are living more sedentary. We're in office jobs. We spend most of our time uh, sitting in a desk, uh, and our bodies really need to move and, and function. Um, perhaps we lack or, or we haven't acquired yet uh, tools to, to help us deal with, with mental health. Um, and, and so mental and emotional health have a direct impact on our metabolism and, and, uh, and managing it and using it to, or, or, or focusing it in the right way is, is a great way of, of keeping metabolism in check um, and keeping that, Letting it get out of control is a great way to exacerbate or, or make it worsen your metabolism. Um, I mentioned previously, burning the candle at both ends um, is a surefire way of, of disrupting and uh, worsening your, meta your, meta your meta metabolism. You need to be resting your body um, and getting the proper rest, re recovery, uh, renovation, um, that renewal that happens in, in deep sleep and, and all too often we're not, we're not, uh, there's a little bit of a culture of, Hey, I can, I can handle, you know, working 80 hours a week and not getting enough sleep. And, and that's, uh, that's just a recipe for disaster. But ultimately um, what is driving poor metabolism is uh, our overconsumption of sweets, uh, sugars, um, and you can see here with this little graph that uh, the United States is by far the leader um, in in the number of calories consumed a day with um, uh, sugars and sweeteners. And so um, there's a problem. There's a real problem with that. So when we talk about metabolism, we like to look at um, um, from a from a clinical and a medical uh, perspective. We like to take snapshots, and 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 we do this by doing blood draws of of different parameters that are uh, we can measure from from blood uh, things uh, things that give us indications on how efficient um, different parts of our body are working. Excuse me, and um, included included in that it would be like um, assays on on the the effectiveness and the efficiency of our kidneys, our liver. Um, and, and one of the really simple, uh, easy ways of looking at metabolism and the efficiency of our metabolism and how well our body is functioning is by looking at um, blood sugar and um, the amount of sugar in our blood. And we'll, we'll say interchangeably sugar and glucose. Glucose is a sugar, um, and it's the main uh, sh form of sugar that we analyze uh, in the body. And so... Um, when we when we take these draws, we're we're really just taking a, a picture in time of how the efficiency of our body. We we track that with time, and and hopefully we're seeing um, uh, positive things happen. Uh, but it can also be a really simple indicator of of things that uh, may not be um, working well. So again, looking at using this as our primary primary um, parameter that we want to look at. Um, different types of foods have different effects of um, sugar in our blood or glucose in our blood. Um, carbohydrates obviously have the biggest impact because they are um, 
the simplest and easiest way to convert uh, long polysaccharides into short little subunits. Um, and that's uh, and that's why if we're looking at the, the level of blood glucose on the y-axis relative to the x-axis is time, you'll see um, uh, carbohydrates have the biggest impact on blood sugar um, in meals. Proteins, not as much. Fat, a little bit, even less. Um, uh, and and we look at blood sugar um, because it's a really simple, easy way. And we also understand that there's um, there are hormonal responses to those foods that we eat, and especially foods that are high in sugar. Um, and the main and primary hormone that's involved is insulin. And so we can look and see again, the insulin response on the y-axis uh, versus time. And you'll see you get, uh, you'll see a really nice uh, relationship between macronutrients and so carbohydrates because they're, because they are uh, primarily starches and, and polysaccharides um, will elicit a, a higher insulin response. Insulin's uh, main function as a hormone is to um, act as a gatekeeper and and, uh, and, and help our body uh, absorb sugar. Um, we don't get that big of a response with um, insulin in response to protein consumed or, or even, and even less with dietary fat. Um, and, and again, the reason why insulin is so critical is because um, its primary function is to help the body uh, avoid sugar toxicity. Too much sugar in the blood is not good for your body. It's toxic. Uh, it's very damaging. Um, and so insulin is produced in response to that. Um, and you can see here in this graph, it's a little cartoon. Um, the insulin will come and, and uh, bind to insulin receptors in the cell. You can think of this as a muscle cell or something. And um, uh, without this interaction, the, there's a channel that actively transports glucose from the bloodstream into the cell. Um, when insulin is bound, um, then it will open up this channel. There's some structural rearranging that's happening, and then you'll see this channel open up, and glucose can then enter into the, the cell, be converted into ATP or, or stored as uh, uh, either glucagon or, uh, or fat. So um, insulin is critical to, to keeping um, healthy levels of sugar in the blood. And we want to keep, um, keep, that, um, keep that production in, in healthy ranges, not too high and not too low for both blood sugar and insulin because too much insulin um, then prevents your body from using fat um, as, as a source of energy. Um, now... Let's look at this in a little bit different, different way. Let's look at this as a as a as a function of, of piping and tubing. Um, how much um, how sugar levels will affect that? So low sugar levels, um, hypoglycemia uh, will result in sluggish behavior and, and kind of fatigue behavior. Um, obviously, we're looking for this norm, um, and that. Uh, and that's actually pretty well defined. We'll get to a graph in just a minute that will show you what healthy blood sugar levels are. Um, too much blood sugar then results in um, some additional stickiness in the in the blood flow, the bloodstream. Um, molecules that that maybe wouldn't interact with each other are now sticking with each other because there's this, this sticky sugar in the bloodstream. Um, but also it starts to exert more pressure. Um, there's a little bit higher viscosity in the blood. Your heart has to work a little bit harder. So a really simple canary in the in the uh, coal mine is looking at circulation and levels of circulation. Um, if you're starting to see your blood pressure rise a little bit, it's likely that your circulation is is worsening, and maybe that's a result of having too much sugar in your blood. Um, over time, like uh, your your blood vessels are fairly pliable, and and, and um, but they can harden, um, and they can also be just uh, they they may just burst, and, and the piping may burst as, as a result of, of elevated levels of sugar in your blood, and so you would, would definitely want to avoid that. Now, I have this graph because I, I think this is a really um, critical thing. Those three contagious, excuse me, those three non-contagious um, epidemics that we're going through, 
um, really have their root in insulin resistance. Um, insulin resistance is really a um, situation in the body where you have to use elevated levels of insulin to maintain healthy glucose levels. Or um, maybe you've gone past the point of return where now insulin levels, your cells are just um, uh, don't don't respond or ignore um, insulin altogether. And so no matter how much insulin you have, uh, blood sugar will always remain high. And that leads to uh, very dangerous situations, again, um, in your body. Um, insulin resistance is the primary driver for cardiovascular disease, for other chronic disease states. So we really want to focus on, on uh, maintaining a great quality of life by keeping um, our blood sugars and um, our insulin levels in a healthy range. To kind of give you some guidance here, here's a, here's a chart. It's really simple. This is the average... Um, this is uh, an average amount of glucose in your in your bloodstream. It's, it's represented as a as a result of an assay called um, hemoglobin A1C or A1C for short. Um, and so this is a percentage. And it's listed as a percentage, and then it can also be translated into what the the average amount of glucose is in the body. Um, the C levels are less than five point seven. It's a function of A1C, A1C or less than 117 milligrams per deciliter, 6.5 normals. Um, this is this is actually even a little bit high. 100 milligrams per deciliter is a really good average. You, you want to be 100 or less. That's reflective of a really good, healthy metabolism. Once you get above that, then you're starting to get into what's called a pre-diabetic phase. Um, and then a, yeah, and above 6.5 um, percent or six point uh, seven point six millimoles 137 milligrams per deciliter you're in a you're in a diabetic stage and um and the, the challenge with that is are these vasculature events like you start to see with a lot of sugar in your blood then you're prone to um situations that are not good um, where capillaries start to burst maybe in your eye your kidneys maybe you start to lose uh, circulation and sensitivity in the extremities and you start to feel nerve pain um, all these, again, um, are, are uh, the results of really a, a, a long period of time, seven to 10 years of, of, um, of consuming um, foods or being sedentary or, com you know, the worst is, is a combination of the two. So I, I want to just take a quick second and, and state, like, this is not... Um, uh, this this can always be improved like you can at any point in time start today um, and start afresh and start anew um, uh, the body is remarkably uh, wonderful in terms of of uh, fixing regulating and healing itself it takes time and it takes uh it takes effort it takes intention um but it's never too late it's never too late to improve and it's never too late to um to work on things and get better. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, what are some ways in which we can improve. Again, these are simple tips and then we'll get into the product. Um, I, I think this is important to cover here. Physical activity is a great way. Um, there's a great study that shows about 45 minutes of immediate, uh, medium to moderate to high level intensity exercise of 45 minutes can reverse uh, insulin resistance in muscle cells. So think about that. Like don't, don't not work out to not exercise, don't not exercise. Exercise should be a, a part of your life, a, a critical and essential part of your life. Make sure you're getting proper rest. Uh, good rest is a great way um, to make sure that your body is, is uh, uh, going to properly metabolize uh, your food and blood sugars in an appropriate way. Manage your stress again. Um, stress and sleep are kind of interrelated. Um, poor sleep results in a higher stress um, and high stress results in poor sleep. So they have this vicious, um, uh, a vicious cycle, negative cycle, and, and you can reverse that. You can improve your sleep, you can improve your stress management. Um, and what you will see reflected is an improved metabolism. Lastly, and perhaps most importantly, is food that you eat. So the food that you eat matters. The, the, uh, prioritizing good lean protein and, and um, 
good, healthy uh, uh, produce, vegetables, uh, low glycemic fruits. Uh, these are ways in which uh, you can feed your body, feed your microbiome, um, all the things it needs to in order to uh, to function properly and, and uh, not get too high nor too low when it comes to sugar in the bloodstream. Um, we have a solution that helps that helps um, helps your body regulate. Um, let me rephrase that. Helps your body establish um, and stabilize already healthy blood sugar levels. Um, that product, of course, is Transform. It helps your body convert food to energy, um, and it helps your body um, improve glucose metabolism. I mentioned earlier, this is a product that's leveraging enzyme technology. So we've used enzymes uh, for a number of years here at Trinot to break down larger, um, larger uh, polymers like proteins or fats or or carbohydrates and, and to break them down into small subunits. And this product actually works the opposite way. So it's taking um, small subunits um, and can, linking those small subunits into larger polymers. So kind of an interesting twist on the enzyme technology that we have. So in this case, uh, Transform has has what we call the glucose converting enzyme. And glucose converting enzyme will take sucrose, uh, a, a disaccharide, a fructose, and a glucose, um, and it cleaves that bond and then takes the glucose molecules and links them together to create a dietary fiber. Um, very, uh, a very simple and a very clever uh, enzymatic reaction. Um, and we think it takes place in in the stomach and the in, in the small intestines. I think we think that's where it's taking place. We have some very basic chemistry that we'll show you. Um, in fact, we'll show you right now. Uh, some very some very uh, this is what we call wet chemistry or in the in the lab um, looking at um, a simulated uh, gastric environment and and in there we we've, we've added sucrose. Uh, and then added our glucose converting enzyme. And you'll see um, glucose uh, or sucrose is the, uh, the y-axis, your amount of sucrose, and then time here on the x-axis. And you'll see upon the addition of the enzyme, this decrease of sucrose in the solution. Um, and you don't see a concomitant increase in, in free glucose because it's being linked, um, linked into that fiber um, molecule. Um, the enzyme was originally designed to, to be a part of food applications. And so, um, so what you'll see here, again, is sucrose is a function on the y-axis, the amount of sucrose, and then on the x-axis is time. This is a, like a little abbreviated x-axis here, uh, only three time points, but there's three different uh, food applications or juices. So cold drinks, sodas, uh, fruit juices is the second group here in the middle. Uh, and then you see these beverages uh, that have additional sugar added to them. Um, sucrose, by the way, is another way of saying table sugar. So um, very common thing. You'll see again uh, with the addition of glucose converting enzyme over time, you see there's reduction in sucrose uh, across all the food applications. Now, that's all kind of fine and dandy, um, but we want to know like how is this going to operate in the... Um, in the body. And so um, we had a group of, of volunteers. Um, glucose converting enzyme is a very safe enzyme. It's not uh, not at all um, uh, allergenic or anything of that nature. Um, we had a, a, a group here um, uh, and we all participated in a very simple, um, very simplified oral glucose tolerance test. So we wore Continuous glucose monitors, um, and then we um, consumed a very high carbohydrate meal, um, and then uh, we repeated the same thing the following day, only this time consuming um, or taking some transform beforehand. So what you'll see here on the y-axis is the blood sugar levels, and then on the x uh, on the x-axis is time. In red, you'll see this uh, typical glucose curve. Um, you'll see this nice peak. 
Um, this is after eating a, a high carbohydrate breakfast, um, pancakes, syrup, uh, orange juice. Um, this is lunch a little bit later. Uh, in black, um, this participant would take this about 30 minutes to an hour beforehand, and you see about a 20 to 25 percent reduction in blood sugar levels. Um, pretty impressive. Uh, our, our group was consisted of 15 people, um, about 10. I was about 10, had a very similar pattern. Uh, the other five had something that was um, a little more muted, but um, uh, all in all, the trend was really going in the right direction. So you can see the enzyme is functioning really well. Like here's um, here's this reduction in, in the overall amount, overall amount of, of glucose that's absorbed in the body. And, um, and uh, uh, so we're really pleased with this. We're, we're actively pursuing uh, additional research. Like this is a cool and exciting thing about Trinot Labs um, is that this is a very preliminary um, uh, idea and concept. And we're, we're super stoked about the results that we've seen so far. Now, um, this is, this is one part of uh, Transform that's focused uh, on blood sugar management um, we're going to talk a little bit about the other component, uh, the grains of paradise, the thermo GP um, product that, or ingredient that's in in Transform. Now, this is part of the ginger uh, pepper family. Um, it's it's cultivated in West Africa, and and um, uh, we use an extract that's full of these uh, phenolic compounds: six paradol, six gingerol. Um, and these, these uh, phenolic compounds um, activate what's called brown adipose tissue. Uh, so let's talk about that for just a minute. There's a couple of different types of fat tissue. Um, adipose um, is a fancy way of saying, the scientific way of saying fat. Uh, so um, brown adipose tissue has these characteristics where <laughs> excuse me, triglycerides are, formed, are stored in multiple vacuoles in, in brown adipose tissue. And then it's also characteristic to have multiple um, mitochondria in, in this um, uh, adipocyte. Uh, here's this is the nucleus. Now, white adipose tissue, on the other hand, has very few mitochondria. There's the nucleus again. Um, and one really, whoops, one really large vacuole. And that vacuole actually changes in size with the amount of triglycerides that are being um, uh, stored in there. And, and so white adipose tissue is actually a little more malleable in terms of size, but it reaches a, a point where it can't store anymore. So uh, the grades of paradise work to activate um, the brown adipose tissue. Now, this is the kind of fat tissue that is involved in um, uh, temperature regulation in the body. So when you're cold and you're shivering, that's your body utilizing uh, uh, energy stores from brown adipose tissue and, and grains of paradise have this beijing effect where um, you're you're converting this white fat cell into this brown fat cell. You're starting to get more vacuoles created, uh, more mitochondria produced. Um, so it's not white and it's not fat. It's kind of in the middle of this, this beijing effect. And um, this is the kind of thing that uh, works really well in conjunction with exercise. Because exercise has a beijing effect on adipose tissue, white adipose tissue, excuse me, um, as does fasting. And so um, grains of paradise um, help to, to uh, activate and then uh, activate brown adipose tissue and then uh, in that beijing effect of conversion of, from white to brown. So a uh, study, a um, couple pieces of information, a study done in Japan, just you know, notice um, uh, participants who supplemented with uh, grains of paradise extract actually exerted or um, spent five times more energy than people just using a placebo effect. So this is um, energy in, in typically in the form of heat dissipation, um, but it's energy that's also um, primarily coming from um, fat. Uh, and in, in this particular case, the, the specific type of fat or visceral fat, so you can see in the placebo group, there's almost, there's no fat utilization um, versus uh, the grains of paradise group where it's utilizing visceral fat, which is great. This is the fat that sits around our, our organs and has this endocrine, um, endo uh, it's active in terms of metabolically active emitting 
uh, cytokines, pro-inflammatory cytokines. And um, so this is great. This is a great way of reducing that. So you can see, um, you'll see a very complementary effect. If we manage blood sugar, great. Um, that can keep our insulin levels um, and healthy in a healthy range. If we do that, then we can start to leverage um, fat stores for energy. Um, and we get this really nice complementary uh, mode of action between the two the two, uh, the enzyme blend and the grains of paradise, this thermogenic. Um, let's talk a little bit about how to use the product and who should use the product and when. Uh, so take one to two capsules with each meal is our direct, uh, recommended direction of use. Um, 30 to 60 minutes prior to a meal. Uh, this gives time, the capsule time to dissolve um, and potentially uh, relocate into the small intestines. Um, uh, if uh, that that number varies, and so the time I mean varies. So for some people, your gut transit time is faster. For some, it's lower. If you just shoot for thirty minutes, uh, that covers uh, pretty much covers everybody. Um, if you forgot um, and you still want the benefit, take the product. It's fine. It'll still um, it'll still give you some benefit, even if you're a little bit later in the meal. Um, if you, if you just remember like right before, just crack up with the capsules and, uh, put it on some food and eat it and, um, it'll, you'll, you'll still get the majority of the benefit of the product for sure. Um, this is a product that's really, uh, great for adults. Um, we don't have, um, we have a lot of great safety data on adults, um, with the grains of paradise and of course the, uh, the enzymes, uh, the enzymes are great for children, are great for, um, uh, pregnant nursing women. We don't have that same quality of data with the grains of paradise. So just check with your healthcare provider um, prior to, uh, if you're a pregnant or a nursing woman, always check with your healthcare provider. Um, uh, I, I always feel like it's a great um, question of courtesy that you let your healthcare provider know what you're consuming. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of uh, wisdom in, in doing that. Um, they can monitor things, monitor your progress, and um, it's a great thing for them to see. So, so that if you have a question, always uh, uh, go to them um, for some counsel and some advice. And you can always write us here at products at .com. Uh, Let me repeat that email, products at .com. Um, And we get those emails and we'll do our best to answer them in, in the, as quickly, uh, quickly amount of time as possible and also um, with the right the right kind of information and data. Um, the product's great. Um, you can use this product um, really uh, for as long as you need to. Um, and uh, for some people that might be longer, for some people might be shorter, um, but it's the, it's the kind of product that works with every meal. Um, uh, and you don't have to necessarily wait uh, six months to see benefits. You will see a lot of great benefits over time. And, and we're excited to track those benefits and track that data and, and give you even more information. So uh, if you're tired of, if you're tired of being tired, want to try and reduce the amount of skin blemishes or improve your circulation, get rid of that brain fog, transform the product for you. Uh, so don't wait, get it now. Uh, it's a great product. Again, we're here to answer questions um, and we're here to, uh, help improve your quality of life right from the get-go so thank you for your attention thank you so much for your time and we'll see you soon